This is a fiction piece called Two Gays, One Cup. <laughs> um, Alright. <clears throat> he was beautiful. It's his smile I remember the most. Staring at me from across the intersection as sunlight reflected off the sweat on his forehead. That soft looking smile froze me in place with the promise of laughter and choice blowjobs. The smile was still there as the loose power line swung down from its utility pole, the crackling tail landing alongside his neck. There was a firecracker pop as my future boyfriend became a lit match, then toppled to the warm concrete in limp submission. The other pedestrians nearby jumped back, fearing the dancing power line that still fizzed with angry voltage against the sidewalk. I walked to the other side of the street for a closer look. No point in running, really and saw my dream man twitching in a spastic heap. The skin was already peeling off his head in charred strips. He reminded me of an old dried balloon. A man in a mauve vest clutched at my forearm. Oh my god, what happened? Do you know him? He asked, swimming with mania and confusion and spitting the question all over my face. No, we haven't met yet. I looked down one last time at my could-have-been man's smoldering mug. Unable to find that enticing smile and the blistered glob of tissue that must have been his lips. Does it matter, I thought, dislodging the hysterical dandy and walking up the hill towards my house. It was in this moment that I decided I needed a vacation. In perfect coincidence, my buddy Peter called minutes later to ask if I wanted to go camping. You mean like Yosemite? An ambulance wail echoed in the distance. That shit's played out, dude. I was thinking Henry Coe. Ugh, I grimaced. Isn't that by San Jose? It's a shorter drive than Yosemite. Buck up and deal with a big lazo. I sat for a moment, mulling the offer. Well, you in or out, Peter said. If it's not your thing, I'll ask my roommate. Lewis? Isn't he in love with you? Oh, shut your gap. We're just good friends. So, what's it going to be? I'm in. Peter was at my door 30 minutes later. After some rushed packing, followed by two and a half hours of driving, we arrived at the Gilroy side entrance to the park's main road. Despite keeping all windows rolled up for the past 30 minutes, the gamey stench of garlic clung close. I was eager to explore this new park, letting the plains wind strip the stinky Gilroy musk from my hair. Perhaps if we smoked enough of Peter's hash, my memory of this morning's electrocution would also fade. Yes, I thought out loud. Yes, it will. I was hopeful. Dude, are you talking to yourself? Oh, sorry about that. Peter rolled our car to a stop along Hunting Hollow. A busted, rusty sign nearby beckoned us towards something called Steer Ridge Trail. Stepping outside, a brisk wind grazed my chest, tightening my nipples in chill response. Before us lay stretches of ashy, serpentine rock and dry, grassy hills dusted with trees. The smell of wheat and sulfur carried lightly through the air through the air. <clears throat> Peter stepped out of the car, extending his limbs in a standing X. Ah, isn't this great? He said. A low-flying vulture bombed a wad of pasty shit on Peter's shoe, in contemptuous defiance of our moment. As Peter swore and scuffed the shit from his shoe, I began unloading our economical selection of supplies from the trunk. Um, Peter? Can't help but notice there's no tent. Still occupied with scrape cleaning his shoe, Peter looked up and laughed. Tents are for pussies. We're doing this shit in sleeping bags, you and me. I eyed the departing vulture in the distance, thinking I had made a grave mistake. Oh, come on, Peter said, walking over and patting my shoulder. Don't be such a bummer. I'll make sure to keep you warm. He smacked his lips and slapped my ass as I rolled my eyes. We slept together once years ago. Something about his dick turned me off a bulging vein that ran down its middle, and since then we've been purely friends. <laughs> All right, Oscar, think happy thoughts and let's get going. Peter jostled about, hoisting his backpack aloft while shoving beef jerky into his mouth. I want us to make it to Madrone Springs by eight. You sure you know where we're going? I asked, positioning the camelback spigot into my mouth for a squirt of Dr. Brown's cream soda. Duh, second to the right and straight on till I say so. Peter cocked his head at an overgrown dirt trail leading towards uh -huh. a distant forested valley. At least it wasn't the same direction as the vulture. I pulled up my socks, sprayed on a layer of off, and headed down the trail behind my perky guide. 
Three hours, two piss breaks, and one wild pig sighting later, we made it to the ruins of Madrone Springs. An abandoned stone cooler built into the nearby hillside signaled our arrival. Ah, oh, man, exactly what I planned. Look at this place! Peter spread his arms in a semicircle, indicating our lush surroundings in the nearby trickling stream. Picture fucking perfect. I'm gonna get stoned. He set to digging through his backpack for the pipe as I surveyed our campsite. To the left of our little patch of worn grass stood a set of three old stone tubs. To the right was a small copse of cypress and maidenhair fern. A soft clucking emanated from behind the greenery. As I moved to investigate, the noise ceased. To my rear, Peter coughed. The pipe was lit, and he was choking out small gouts of gauzy smoke. Want some? Bubble hash. I shook my head, suddenly apprehensive of disassociating from our surroundings, despite my original desire to puff this morning's trauma away. We set to arranging our single campsite while the sky darkened to a sleepy deep navy. Once finished with our dinner of jerky and balance bars, we stripped down and went to soak in two of the old stone tubs. Peter continued to smoke hash in the tub, rambling on about the constellations overhead. I mostly ignored him, instead watching a small praying mantis balancing along the edge of my tub like some green flying Walenda. After several minutes, Peter stopped speaking. I sat in hollow silence. The sky had turned from dark blue to luminous glowing ebony purple, and the trees were still from the absence of any wind. Then I heard it, the clucking from before, which transformed into an amplified gobbling. I stared towards the nearby thicket of cypress. Peter remained in the adjacent tub, stoned out of his mind and oblivious to the noise. The undergrowth parted and two knobby spurred legs emerged, carrying a glossy, feathered body. Several other forms followed in delicate, gobbling procession. Eventually, a flock of some twelve turkeys stood in a semicircle a few feet from our tubs. The turkeys swayed back and forth, rust-colored waddles gyrating rapidly and timing with each gobble. This avian chorus continued for some time, until the central turkey stepped forward. In a sudden flourish, his lustrous copper feathers bloated outward while his rear fans swept down towards the ground. The explosion of plumage propelled Boss Turkey through the air up to the rim of my tub. In one swift jab of the beak, he gulped down my ingenue praying mantis and then hopped to the empty tub on my left. With a gentle splash, Boss Turkey settled into the water, presumably to relax and digest his meal. We sat there together, Peter, myself, this leader of turkeys, blazing in the cool mineral water under a warm night sky. The other turkeys maintained their mute vigil with preternatural stillness. Only Boss Turkey made noise, cooing softly as he flexed his pinions in the tub. Then, with a sudden thrust, he leapt from the tub to the mossy earth, standing nearby, eyes fixed on me. <clears throat> one by one, each of the eleven subordinate turkeys strutted forward, hopping the tub, and then enjoying their turn in the tepid water. None of the turkeys possessed the imperial grace of their commander, though each male maintained some echo of the poise displayed by Boss Turkey. Once the final and smallest turkey completed his bath, the twelve fowl again arranged themselves in a semicircle facing unconscious Peter and myself. The moonlight glistened off their quills, and Boss Turkey stepped forward, staring me down. With a resounding gobble, he twirled 180 degrees to face their growth of origin, prancing off with regal purpose. Each of his lieutenant turkeys followed in single file, disappearing silently into the brush. As it came to the final bantam turkey, I heard Peter mumble something unintelligible. The last turkey perked his fleshy noodle up at the sound, and with abrupt quickness, ran to our neatly arranged pile of camping goods and seized one of two small, shiny titanium cups. He stood there with a the mug in his mouth for a moment, and then let out a jittery gobble before running after his colleagues in the darkened shrubs. Following the departure of the final turkey, I emerged from the tub, letting the cool water run down my fuzzy legs while air drying the night sky. Grabbing a nearby towel, I shook Peter awake. What? Huh? I said you're not putting it in there, Peter murmured as I lifted him up and wrapped the towel around his waist. Oh please, I said. Not on the menu. It's bedtime, so get dry. 
I call Peter as he stumbled on the moss, letting the towel drop to the ground. You missed all the excitement. There was a parade of wild male turkeys that came from the forest and took baths in the tub next door. This seemed to shake Peter out of his delirium, and he leveled a green stare at my face. You must have been seeing shit, because a bunch of male turkeys wouldn't hang out together, and it's nighttime besides. I started to interrupt him, but he cut me off, saying, trust me, I know turkeys. <laughs> As we settled down for a midnight snack before bedtime, I remembered the missing cup, but didn't bother to point out this one piece of evidence to Peter. We lay our sleeping bags atop the softest patch of moss, Peter squirming into his first. I stood naked for a moment, staring at the hill beyond our valley. In the distance, a faint line of dots ambled up its crest, backlit by the moon. Are you just going to stand there showing off your dick, or are you going to catch some Z's? Sun comes up early tomorrow, Oscar. I gazed after the departing fraternity of turkeys for another moment, let loose a soft gobble of my own, and settled down for sleep. <laughs>